hello guys in this video we will see one way to manage state in your vanilla javascript code and i will also talk about one uh, cool function which can actually reduce your code some uh, in a way so let's just start this is going to be a really nice uh, tip for the vanilla javascript so over here we have a small empty project it contains three file index.html app.js and tailwind css tailwind css is is actually the build version of Tilden CSS so uh, and then the app.js is actually an empty JavaScript file so we will start writing some boilerplate code here alright like this now let's change the title to be pseudo state so psqedo state and then we're going to come back to this location. Let's just write some uh, code. So, for example, hello world. So, when I reload it, now you guys can actually see this code here, right? So, let's link the CSS file here. So, we'll do link colon CSS, and here I can actually change the name. And also, I'm going to link the JavaScript file, so we'll do script src and provide the path to app.js. Okay, so let's do some sort of styling for this heading here. So let's say text3xl font semi bold text center and margin bottom to be 6. Alright, so let's write some more code just to make it. Uh, look contentful <laughs> so we're going to provide another class to be margin bottom to be 10 all right so we have some sort of content here now let's say we have a button and we're going to specify an id here not class id I and mean, let's just say btn and we're going to uh, name it like click here all right so the button is not that great looking so let's just provide some styling here class px6 py2 bg gray 700 text white m4 and uh, rounded sm all right so now it is going to look like a button so let's go to the app.js file and uh, let's talk about how to select elements so this is going to be the function that i'm actually talking about so essentially we can actually do the same thing by using document.query selector but it's actually a really big word and when you are going to um, select multiple elements uh, it actually Im uh, increases the amount of code right so in order to reduce it we can have a function and the name of function here is actually dollar and i'm using the es6 syntax for writing functions and uh, so this function takes a parameter called q and basically it is going to identify the elements so const ELS is equals to we'll use the document dot query selector all and we're going to provide the query as this uh, argument of the function and then ELS is essentially going to be the list of elements so now we can actually check if ELS dot length is greater than one if the length is greater than one we can actually return ELS itself and else if if the length is actually equals to one then we can return the ELS and then zero so basically the first element from this list so you can also have a else condition which is essentially the condition when there is no matched element so at this stage you might want to return the null but the thing is if you do not write this else statement as well it will actually return the null for this uh, for this case when the length is actually zero or negative well length cannot be negative but if it is zero at that stage it will be null just because the function will start executing and if it is greater than one it will return ELS if it is less than if it is one then it will return the first element and if it is not one that is it if it is zero then essentially it will return null so yeah now if you want to select the elements you can directly use this dollar symbol and here you can specify the query you want to select for example this 
and if for example you want to change the color of this button so you can actually do style but let's not talk about the uh, changing the color let's talk about changing the text so I can do the inner text and let's say changed by JavaScript right so when I save it you will see this this thing is actually working cool right so now if you want to select any element you can directly use the dollar symbol instead of writing this whole uh, document or query selector thing okay so which is actually cool now we'll talk about managing the state right so this was the mo main thing uh, for the video so we're going to have a object here which is actually going to represent our state and uh, we have a state variable here for example name and we're going to have a value here so let's just provide changed by JS okay so when I save it you can see it is back to normal we have a button called click now the way we're going to handle this state by is by creating a function called render DOM so this function is actually going to render the HTML content so if you go if I go back to this location now I'm going to have a div here with ID app so this is going to be the place where I'm going to render the DOM content so we are going to come back to this location and first of all we'll select this particular div and then we're going to clear all the inner HTML code so inner HTML is equals to empty string and then I can again copy it and say here I can actually use the now what I can do is directly copy the rendered content that I want for example if I want to render this button uh, so I can actually put it here and if you want to format it you can so it will basically going to change the uh, it will basically add this button element inside the app div so now if I try to execute this function called render DOM it is going to execute and put this content inside the app div so you can see we have this button and it is inside the app div so if we go to the inspect here let's just put it down so if I try to inspect you will find that it is inside the app div right so how can we manage the state here so the first way is to manage state is by creating a function we'll create a function and we'll call it set state so this is actually going to be responsible for changing the state it takes a method called callback so callback is actually going to be a function so we are first of all going to execute the callback method and then again we are going to call the render DOM so whenever somebody calls the set state it is going to ch uh, call the method that they are passing as an argument and then they will call the render DOM so essentially what will happen whenever you change the content whenever you change the state the, the changes will be reflected in the DOM so now we have this function so I can actually save it here now instead of the click here I can actually provide the state here directly so I will provide the state dot state dot and the name of the state is name okay so when I save it you can see changed by JavaScript right so let's talk about how to change the state so whenever you change the variable name we want it to reflect it right so let's see what will happen so here I'm going to use the set interval so it takes a method and uh, let's use set timeout set timeout all right so we want to execute a function over here and it should be executed after three seconds so what we want to do is change the state so I can just call this uh, set state method here which takes a function as an argument so I'm providing the function here and we are basically going to change the state variable here so I'm going to do state dot state dot name and let's say again changed when I save it 
you will see it is currently changed by js and then after three seconds it is again changed right so if i reload it you will see that it is changed by js and after three seconds it's again changed so this is one use case now let's talk about one more thing to actually demonstrate the same thing i'm going to have a button here button and let's say click me to change state all right so let's provide a id here let's say changer so i'm going to copy this id and let's add the on click event listener so instead of right instead of adding an event listener we can directly do um, hashtag changer to select it and then we can directly use the on click here and it takes it is actually a method so we can do it like this so we want to basically change the state so we can do by calling the method state set state which needs a function as a callback and here you can actually change the state so state dot name is equals to changed by set state all right so when i save it you will see this uh, content is change, changed by javascript but when i click on it it is going to be changed by set state so again i'm going to explain you how it is actually working so basically we have a function the set state which is calling the callback function first and then rendering the dom again so whenever you click here whenever the state is changing the dom is actually rendered again all right so this is how you can actually manage your state in vanilla javascript so yeah this is it so if you like this video make sure to uh, like it and yeah i'll see you next time